What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today on Christmas Eve, the 24th of December in 2018. So for all you guys that are new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All all of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be a part of a community of about 370 active investors and traders, join our Discord group chat. It's 100% free. We're talking about stocks, investing, trading, you know, news, strategies, philosophies, and just helping each other on a day to day basis become the best possible traders and investors that we can. So if you guys want to be in contact with me on all of those platforms and the rest of our community. Again, all those links are down below in the description box. And let's talk about what happened today in the overall market. And drum roll, please. It was another red day. It was another red day in the stock market. The Dow Jones was down 653 points, down 3% on the day. The S&P 500 closed the day down 65 points, down about 2.71%. And the NASDAQ guys down 2.72%, down 165 points. We cracked $6,000 on the NASDAQ guys. We're at $5,800. And this was the worst Christmas Eve historically in terms of the Dow and the S&P 500. This month of December, guys, has been absolutely brutal for every single index in the entire stock market as a whole. This has been one of the worst Decembers to date in terms of the stock market. And let's just get talking about this, guys. What's going on in terms of these technicals for the Dow Jones? And, you know, we're going to look at this a little bit closer here. And for those of you guys who have been watching my videos for a while, I talk about every single index in the beginning of every single video so we can get an understanding of where the overall stock market is moving so we can base our short-term trades on that. And obviously, since the beginning of October, guys, it's been absolute bloody death you know it's been like hell in the stock market right just to put it in you know a short phrase it's been like hell in the stock market over these past couple of weeks and we can see that right here guys you know the the dow jones is right on the brink of becoming, uh, you know, entering a bear market. For those of you guys that don't know, when an index falls 20% from its high, that means it's entering into a bear market. Obviously, 20% or more, but anything, you know, 10, 15% drop, that is considered a correction. So as of right now, we're down about 19% on the NASDAQ, and we've been rapidly selling off. And this just shows how, you know, how much panic has been in the overall stock market over the past couple of weeks guys take a look the selling here i thought this selling was bad right i thought this selling was bad but you know ever since honestly the beginning of december it's been even worse we've cranked into a different gear in terms of this selling you know we were selling off at a decently quick pace here but ever since december guys we've just been nose diving in terms of these candlesticks the selling has been rapid and the panic selling has really been kicking in over these past couple of days, you know, especially since the interest rate hike, you know, the, the government shutdown with Trump, you know, the trade war, the tariffs, all of these uncertainties have really been weighing in on the markets. And typically when we have, uh, you know, typically we have strong Decembers historically in the markets, and this December has been terrible. We can judge it, you know, based off of what the Dow is showing us. You know, we've pretty much lost 15% uh, in the in the overall Dow Jones. You know, you know, roughly 15. Actually, is it 15, guys? I don't want to give you false information here, but we can see, you know, from this this bottom out right here at about 28, uh, 21,800, up to where we were to begin uh, this month. 
You know, we are down about 15%, 13, 14, 15% in the Dow Jones, and we're breaking through every support over the past one, two years at this point, right? We can see here on the three year, one week chart, we've broken every support from this past year, 2018. We saw a big sell off back in February and March. We broke that support, right? We were testing the support yesterday, actually, uh, this support from early. Earlier in 2017, September of 2017 to be exact, at about 22,300, we broke through that support today, and now we're going to be testing a support from back in August of 2017. This upcoming, uh, this next upcoming trading day, which is obviously not tomorrow because tomorrow is Christmas, the markets are closed. But on Wednesday, we're going to be testing this 21,600, 700 dollar support level from back in August of 2017. And guys, I've really been talking about this over the past couple of videos that you know the selling is still happening there's still going to be more red in the coming weeks in my personal opinion and we're just continuously breaking through support levels from years ago in these major indexes right guys so now if we break below this one you know the next one we're going to be testing is uh you know this 180 sma on the three year one week chart which is going to put us right at around $21,000 for the overall Dow Jones, guys. And if we get to this point, that's a 6,000-point shed in the Dow Jones from the beginning of October. And obviously, I'm going to be trading mostly market ETFs and inverse ETFs during these times. You know, I'm not really swing trading any large cap stocks or stocks in general while the market is selling off and in an extremely volatile stage because, you know, we We've talked about this. A lot of the charts are looking terrible. And why would you want to swing trade charts that look the way that they do? You know, I pulled up Facebook's chart, you know, Apple's chart. They look terrible. These are not ones that we would want to swing trade, but we would want to day trade inverse ETFs. And that's what they're really meant for to begin with because they are volatile and they do offer percentage, uh, you know, really nice percentage of margin every single day. And, you know, that's what I've been seeing success with. And that's what I've been sticking with over these times, uh, over these past couple of weeks of this massive sell-off that we've been seeing. And, you know, just judging off the S&P 500, guys, we're breaking that trend that I was talking about in the previous video, right? This trend stemming back from 2008, and we can see this trend has been a very good support, right? We noticed the bounce here, it bounced here again, bounced here again, and now that we've seen the big sell-off from about 2,940 in the S&P, you know, all the way down to where we were yesterday, I figured that this could potentially be a, a consolidation spot or a bounce spot for the Dow Jones, or for the S&P rather, but the the fact that we broke below it now and we're testing the 50 SMA on this 20 year one month chart guys not looking too good and again like I mentioned in the previous video and I'm going to say it again if we do break this level guys that's not going to be a really good sign at all for the Dow, uh, for the S&P on a technical basis and just keep an eye on this because again we like to keep an eye on the indexes to really just uh, decide what we're going to be trading in terms of stocks and ETFs so let's see how far the, the S&P has fallen as of right now from this past high in October. And we can see, guys, it's literally fallen about 20%. So the S&P is officially in a bear market as of today, Christmas Eve, December 24th in 2018. So in the terms of the S&P, guys, just keep an eye on that 20-year chart. Keep an eye on that trend. And just, just keep an eye on whether or not you know, we're going to be holding above, uh, you know, we've obviously broken below all of these supports, but, you know, just keep an eye on this three-year chart, guys, on, you know, previous levels that we saw in terms of the S&P. So now that we're breaking that trend on the two-year or the three-year chart, rather, you know, just keep an eye on these previous levels 
for the S&P. You know, we're technically at a support right now on this three-year, one-week chart at about $2,300. So keep an eye on that. You know, the next one after that could be around, you know, $2,225. So keep an eye on that level. And obviously, guys, you know, with the state of the market that we're in right now, this rapid selling, us entering into a bear market, large caps falling like crazy, and really just the short-term news pointing towards more downside, I wouldn't be surprised if we do break this level and start to push down down to $2,200 and eventually, you know, if we get deeper and deeper into a bear market, nothing clears up in terms of these, you know, short-term uh, short term frustrations, I would like to call them in the market with Trump, China, you know, the government shut down, all these different things, you know, we could potentially get to this level down here. But again, just keep an eye on the news, what's going on in the short term, because that's really going to fluctuate what is, uh, you know, the markets as a whole and what's been going on in the overall stock market. So again, the S&P down about 20% officially in a bear market and keep an eye on these levels here. And just judging off the NASDAQ guys, this one again, is breaking through a lot of these supports that we've set over the past couple of uh, you know years now. This one, you know, obviously we broke the one in this past uh, from this past February March. We broke this one, you know, today right with this 165 point loss, and we broke down the six thousand dollar level. So now we're going to be testing a support from back in September. In the September of 2017, at around $5,800 and uh, you know, 58.50 and uh, 50 cents at this point in terms of the NASDAQ. So there's a lot of support levels here. And again, like I've been saying, guys, there's more downside to come, in my personal opinion. And uh, you know, these support levels are very, very critical for the NASDAQ. And you know, this is just something that. We have to keep an eye on to determine what we want to trade in the overall stock market. So now that we got a better eye on what the technicals are looking, new are, are looking like new support levels for the main indexes and what direction we see uh, the the major indexes falling are, are you know headed towards. Let's take a look at what I traded today, and I'm sure a bunch of you guys can already guess. Yes, it was TVIX, and today, today's trading day was very quick for me, guys, because to be completely honest with you, I'm a last-minute person when it comes to shopping, right? I don't shop for myself really ever, right? I'm not one of those people that loves, you know, spending money on clothes, shoes. I'm more conservative. You know, I, I'm fine with getting really cheap stuff, you know, once a year just to hold me on for that year and when it comes to me you know buying stuff for other people especially for Christmas I procrastinate because I'm not the best of shoppers because like I just said you know I don't really shop so I really just you know traded quickly today and then went shopping to the mall right that's what I pretty much did today so if I wasn't too active in the chat you know that's pretty much why because my lazy behind right my lazy butt we waited till the last minute to do a lot of my shopping. Not to say that I waited to do all my shopping today, but uh, I would say about half of my shopping was left to today, right? I had ideas of what I wanted to get, but I didn't execute on buying those uh, things that I wanted to get until today. And that's just how I roll, guys. You know, I don't know why I'm like that, but that's just how I am. So drop a comment down below. Let me know if you're like that. I saw some pictures actually in the group chat of people shopping and showing their, uh, you know, Christmas gifts. So I guess I'm not the only one uh, in this circumstance. But, you know, I traded TVIX today, guys. Like I said, early on in the morning and let's just see what ended up happening you know obviously the markets were selling off very quickly from the get-go and that's where I ended up trading TVIX so I waited to see some consolidation here guys and I wanted to see if it was going to push past these uh you know pre-market highs at around 73 four ish dollars right and i figured if it broke out of that resistance and the markets continued to sell off that would be a good indication for me to hop into tvix and we saw that that exactly that just happened you know we broke out of that resistance the s p continued to sell off pretty heavily in the morning and we saw that rebound you know at about what time was that at about 10 o'clock but at that point to be completely honest with you guys i was already out of tvix that's how quick of a trade it was and 
you know, it actually worked out very well because again, you know, I needed to shop today uh, and I needed to trade pretty quickly today. And that's what ended up happening, right? And obviously it doesn't always happen like that. You can't always be like, I'm trading 10 minutes today and I'm going to be done. Obviously some days are going to be two hours. Some days are going to be three, uh, 30 minute sessions. Some days, three hour sessions. You really don't know, but you know, for the most part, I'm trading within 9 30 and 12 PM, uh, you know, Eastern standard time. But today it was really from 9 30 to about, uh, 10, 10 AM, right? So 30 minute session for me today, very quick. And I'll show you guys exactly where I ended up, you know, taking the position. So we started to sell off early in the S and P 500 and I jumped into TVIX right? I believe at around like $74 and what was it like 16 cents to be exact with you guys. And I'll show you on this closer term chart here on a zoomed in chart. We broke out of that resistance. Now we start to see very quick movement in TVIX. And I got in, you know, honestly at around 74.16, like I said, we pulled back, held a higher low from the previous low here, ended up adding a little bit more money as we started to push back up. I believe at around 75, uh, 45. So from 7545 and I added I added the initial balance at around 7416. My average cost was right around here I believe at around like $74.90 and from 7490 guys I took about 2.8 I believe on this trade or 2.8% uh, profit right around here I sold off at like $77 and my reasoning behind this just like every single trade that I execute that works in my favor because again you know I take losses everyone takes losses but the ones that work to my favor the way I I you know the way my mind works in terms of when I'm going to sell is I try and wait for a higher high push in the ETF stock, whatever I'm trading on the intraday chart, and in this case, that was around 77, before I take my uh, profits or some profits off of the board, right? And, you know, this works because... You know, if we do, and, 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 works, and it works other ways too. Let me just show you guys an example here. So like I said, you know, let's say I got in at $75, right? We pushed up here. That was a higher from a high from where I bought. We pulled back and then we pushed up to another higher high. Well, what happened before we pushed to this higher high and what really uh, made me understand that I'm going to hold through this push was that once we break a resistance, guys, right? That means a, a stock or an ETF is pushing and trying to advance to the next higher high. And that gives me more uh, incentive to hold, right? To hold that stock. Because if we were getting rejected here, and this happens a lot, guys, and we started to see a double top action, I would take my profits in that particular instance as well. But the fact that we were breaking above it here, you know, made me realize that there could be some more profit in the tank for TVIX. And the fact that we, you know, broke above it here, again right out then then as it broke here right as it broke here like I said, guys, we pushed to another higher high. We pulled back, and once we tested this resistance again, I was either gonna I was either gonna sell here if we start to see a double top, or I was gonna wait a little bit more if we broke above. And this is what happened in today's scenario, right? We broke above that, right? And I sold off at seventy seven dollars for about two point eight percent. So drop a comment. Let me know if you guys follow a similar uh, you know similar strategy when it comes to selling your positions, right? And I I hope I didn't confuse anybody there. It's just very simple, right? If you see a double top start to form, that might be a good opportunity to take your profits if you're in down here, for example. But if you see that we are breaking out of that resistance, right, that could mean there's more profit in the tank. And it's all about watching what the candlesticks do and what the technicals are telling you. And in this situation, guys, perfect example here of a double top. See, you notice here, guys, we didn't end up breaking up for another high higher high here in TVIX. So if I were to wait this long to take my profits in TVIX and I was noticing that we weren't breaking up for another higher high, you know, this double top formation could give me an indication that, you know, this one might be done running for the day. It might be time to take profits. And, you know, if you were to follow that strategy here, you know, you would have done well because after that it sold off 
pretty rapidly. So that's what I traded today, guys. Again, very quick 30-minute session for me because I procrastinated and had to do some shopping. But drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. And, you know, that's it for this video. I don't want to hold you guys too long. There is a bunch of new stuff that I do want to talk about. But, again, it's Christmas Eve. I don't want to drag this video on too much you know see i had some new stuff that i want to talk about here but you know we kind of briefly talked about that you know the the uh the dow and the s p largest decline on christmas eve ever that's pretty big uh in terms of my opinion guys in terms of news and we saw you know just to get into this very quickly before I do end up shutting this off, uh, you know, we we saw crude oil fall pretty heavily today. There was a bunch of news with Trump and the government shutdown. And, you know, I'll link this down below in the description because I don't want to just sit here and read this and waste more time uh, in the video. But if you guys want to read this, this is a pretty good recap of what happened today and pretty much this week in the stock market. I'll link it down below in the description box. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and join our Discord as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I hope you all have a great Christmas for those of you guys that do celebrate Christmas. And if you don't, I hope you guys have a great off day tomorrow and whatever you do do. So again, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great holiday season. Peace out.